Well, this is paddle making part two. I just introduced all the tools for this job and uh, now I have taken this nice blank. You can buy these in my shop. This is partly why I'm making this video. This is a take part blank and the process of making this take part stuff is pretty complicated. So I like to sell the blanks like this and you, you can have plenty of fun shaping the paddle. I have given you outer dimensions here, a fixed thickness, a fixed width, um, and the fixed th thickness runs all the way out here. So it's, uh, it's pretty much taken care of, so you can't do anything wrong. Still, um, you could change the shape if you want to. If you want to plan for it, you can do that. Um, <clears throat> and you will have a good eight hours of work finishing this one. We can begin with the pencil. And we're going to do a lot of eyeballing here um, because this is a way I make the pedals. It's just easy and convenient. Um, the first thing you do is you try to divide the paddle shaft in three equally uh, wide parts. You could use a ruler to just check that they are all the same. This looks pretty good. <clears throat> Once you got it, you should just use your fingers. And what you do is you, you grab the pencil like this between your thumb and your, and your longest finger. I don't know what it's called in English. Uh, and you just pull the finger along the side of the wood. And you can continue over here like this. And you can flip the paddle and do the same here and by just applying the same amount of pressure to the side of the wood. You will get straight even lines. Okay. Now I just flip the paddle because I don't want to lose my good grip here. I got the measure in my fingers now. Uh, here we go. Here we go. It's kind of backwards to make these lines because actually the shaft is what's, what's, what will make last. But anyway, and then we just continue. We use the same measure here because we want this at the end. We want the paddle shaft to be oval, just like the ferrule here. And um, that means we will need a wider section in the middle on the side of the panel. Now, if you don't get this, then just don't think about it. Just watch the video over again. That's a nice thing about video, right? And now it's super important that the paddle is just kept to the workbench and it lies still. So I'm going to just fix it with a couple of clamps here. So, and that's a nice, nice thing about having the, having the square shaft all the way to the end of the, uh, of the project is that I can clamp it and it, it just sits there. Okay. <coughs> And now I'm going to have to do a little more eyeballing. It's fairly easy here because I need this dot to start just in the middle of these two lines. Whereas the other side here, it's kind of harder to eyeball because, oops, it's kind of harder to eyeball because it's a wider surface. So it's not cheating to use a ruler. Now this is nine centimeters. So I just make the dot here right in the middle and I am going to connect these two dots with a line and it can be a good help to have someone help you hold the ruler, but I'm going to try to do this on my own and it's important that the line has some thickness. That's one. A 
as you can see this blank is kind of the worst blank I had I'm making this paddle for myself uh, since uh, it's not the quality that I want to sell um, but I'm sure it will make a fine paddle anyway now I just repeat what I just did make sure the line is fat it should be like three millimeters wide and when I get to planing the blades I'll explain to you why that's it now here comes the side for the side of the paddle I just need to support the paddle with a little block of wood here like this and then I can clamp it handle down and now I just do exactly the same as I just did fat dot in the middle fat dot in the middle and I'm using the ruler again I should have had a helper here so here we go I do this every time I make a paddle I make hundreds of paddles every year and uh, this is the same stuff I do myself eyeballing you see eyeballing small surfaces is really easy then you can lean on your ruler on the larger surfaces That's it. I'm ready to start planing. Um, I got all my lines. That is eight pencil lines, and I got all my marker lines, and that is also four on each blade. And I'm ready to start planing. This is, uh, as I said, the worst blank I had. Um, I can see that the grain is bumping a little bit up and down. It's not completely straight. It's no problem with the strength. It's just uh, that it's getting more complicated to, to plane it. But uh, I'm gonna give it a try. Normally I would plane that way from the shaft towards the end. But in this case, I don't really know. I think I need to be going all directions. But anyway, I can still show you what I'm gonna do. The thing is, there is one rule here. Don't cross the line. That's the single most important rule here. So if you just stay away from that red marker, then you'll be good. And as you can see here, I am um, taking out shavings. I'm just doing a small bit at the time you might think that oh you need to go like this and yeah you can do that it's sort of more efficient but I've seen this so many times that well people get carried away with the planing and then they forget about the lines and then suddenly they have too little wood here so do like me short shavings I just work it really roughly now, so I'm getting a little closer to the line. Um, and I'm 
going the other way. There's a lot to say about spoke, uh, spoke shaving. Um, the, you can change the angle. Um, you can change the angle in this plane. You can change the, how much pressure you put, put upon it. You can make, make it go fast and light, or you can go, make it go slow, take a little at a time. There's so many possibilities here. So you just need to kind of get a feel for the spoke shape and uh, work slowly. I'm a really bad example. I do this every day, so I do it really fast. But for your first surface here to plane, you should just go slow and uh, think of it as a learning process. And you should make this first um, surface absolutely perfect before you start on the next one. Often people do like this. They go to the line and they go to the line and then, yeah, now I'm done. I'm finished. No, you're not because you see this, it's sort of round, right? And to make the lightest and yet strongest possible paddle, this surface should be flat. So I need to do a little more work on this surface to make it flat. So I try to do a little shaving just on the top of the curve. And you see, I still haven't reached the mark yet and shavings are still coming off. So I must be doing something right. It's absolutely flatter, but it could be even flatter. And sometimes you don't need to use the whole uh, surface. You can use just part of the surface. If you're just going for a small top here on the top of a curve, then you can use just the side of the spoke shave. Like this. Makes it easier to just do a little uh, um, spot. Um, and don't worry about the marks, it, it leaves some more like scratching marks across the surface, but you're gonna sand it. And decide when you've done all the surfaces, you have better skills and you could go over them again, make them pretty. At this point, I like to just put my my hip against the paddle because it doesn't move so much. And uh, you might want to know what happens if you cross the mark like I just did here. I barely did, but I can do more. That's better. You just need to make that line. You just need to restore that line as fast as you can. Because if you don't have a line, it's just like being lost in the woods without a map. You can end up anywhere and um, so <coughs> my advice is to just restore the line immediately and even though you are missing like this thick a shaving doesn't matter but uh, if you don't have the line 
it can become a disaster later. So I'm just checking this surface now. I think it looks pretty good. And I can just check with something flat here. And this is flat, flat, pretty flat. Oops, very flat. Mm. Great. And so I say this surface is done. Well, sometimes it's hard to see the the line here on the side from the when you st stand on top of it. So that could be could be a good idea to just flip the paddle around so you have the line here on the side, and then you can just trim it down so it's perfectly straight. This edge is perfectly straight. I guess this is as perfect as it gets. You can eyeball it, see that it's straight. When you look from this angle, from the, the direct end of the paddle down the line, it's easy to see if it bumps up and down. It doesn't, it's pretty good. And I can check the other side as well. Yeah, that's a little thing. And um, I just say I deliberately um, plane one side first after having this side planed. As I told you, this is uh, this is a learning process, right? So once I've done this, I learned a little. Having done this, I learned even more. But then I don't flip around because I'm impatient to see the finished blade. I r I'd rather flip it this way and do two more surfaces because I can still learn. And why is that? Because if I miss some spot here, say I plane off too much in the one spot that happens, then it's easy for me to just change the, the line here a little bit so that I have, have a slightly thicker blade in that spot so I don't make, make it too sharp anywhere. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, by doing the other sides here first, I still have some practice and then when it really matters and you get to the last two sides here, then you have more experience. So that's why I do it that way. Now I am ready with uh, most of the sides here. I've done all four here and I've done these three. This is not my standard with nuts in it, but um, as I said, this is the worst blank I had. I'm going to take it for myself and make sure to sell you guys some better ones. But I also want to show you how to deal with nuts and stuff in case you're going to make your own blank and can't find perfect wood. Uh, it can be kind of nice to just learn how to deal with those. I'm going to play in the last side now, now. And as I said, you will get so much skill from planing all the sides here. We do produce a lot of shavings. Remember 
to make sure it's all flat that gives you the lighter the lighter paddle And just checking the side here. So much easier to watch from the top. And trim down those little bumps that stick out. Yeah, it's pretty good. Now it's uh, sanding time. And as with the planing, I'm going to sand one surface at a time, in this order, 60, 80, 150. I fold, I make this triple fold to make it um, a little stiffer, and I still keep the paddle clamped on the vise and I still avoid the lines and that is super important avoid the lines still you may think that sandpaper is harmless now you're done with your project and everything is fine but no I've seen so many people who have ruined their paddle by over sanding the edges like this and you'll end up with a razor sharp knife instead of a nice and gentle perfectly sharp blade so and that is why I pre prefer this method rather than having a sanding block because this leaves you in control you can see very easily where you sand and where you shouldn't sand and keep the lines and you can apply a lot of pressure so when it's you have a difficult spot where you have like a tool mark or something you can apply some extra pressure here and when you have done a nice planing job and it's all smooth you can you can apply less pressure just slide it over easily like this and it's not so bad a lot of you may be thinking you could do this with a power tool and yes I normally do this with a disc sander but be careful because it works fast so you can also very fast make some mistakes and ruin your beautiful paddle yeah. So, I switch to 80. And as I sand now, I can just explain this. The roughest sandpaper, this one, 60, is the most coarse and that is what does the job of sanding your paddle you need to do use this maybe 90 percent of the sanding is done with this you switch to this and maybe only seven percent of the sanding is done with this and the last three percent is done with 150 grit and why is that because the function of these finer grit sandpapers are only to get rid of the the um, traces of the rough sandpaper this leaves traces thin lines of sand that has been rubbed across the surface and you're going to take them and just them away with a finer grid and then the finer grid sandpaper leaves some small marks on the surface and this is like microscopic 
and you remove them with 150. Real life, like this. And it's all done. Except for that I have to do another seven surfaces now. <coughs> I have overstepped the line a few times here, but I can live with that because it's only the top and I need to round it off a little bit anyway. So now I can round off and at the same time remove the the ink from the marker. So I just go careful and lightly over it because the amount of rounding I do now is not a lot. I like the sharp look of it. Um, so it's just a light rounding and to get rid of the marker. This is a pain. Ah. A flat surface with a marker spot. And as you can see, I always go along the grain because going across the grain just makes these little scratches in the surface so much more visible. So I guess this is it now. And I can go over with 80. and 150. That would be the, the surface of my paddle. <laughs> Pretty neat. Um, now, I showed you earlier how I just trimmed the, the edges here. It's important that the, the edge of the paddle is uh, sharp, but you shouldn't cut yourself. So one method would be to take the 80 grit sandpaper this one which is like the middle rough one and then wrap it around a piece of wood so you get like a, a long surface and then you can put it at a at a 45 degrees angle to the edge here and you can just trim trim the edge slightly like this get rid of the dust. Do the same on the other edge. 45 degrees and just take off the edge. Just remove the sharpness here. Nothing more than that. And as you can see the, the red line here is getting thinner. And now I place it face down the, the line and I just trim it lightly again. So you see no trace of the ink. Then I switch to 150 and I just sand it so that it's really smooth. That's your edge here. Super nice and sharp, but still you can grab it comfortably without injuring yourself and it's not so vulnerable against wear. Perfect. I'm going to do the other sides now. So. Edge. Edge. Top. Top as well.
<clears throat> now the good thing about spruce which is my favorite pedal material is there's a lot of good things about to say about it it's super tough it's super light it's cheap and uh, when you inhale the dust you don't get sick a lot of the other types of woods are actually poisonous like both spruce and cedar no sorry i mean pine and cedar are both considered toxic because of the resin um, but spruce is uh, as far as we know now very safe one important thing i didn't say when i started sanding was that you should make sure that you are absolutely done with all the sharp tools before you start sanding because if i start sanding and then i realize oops i'm not ready yet and i want to start planing off a little more wood then i'm planing sand and you know what sand does to a sharp edge it makes it blunt so if you want to take care of your tools you should not like swap tool you should you should go to sanding and then you should not go back to planing which is why i am now wiping off the dust because i still miss the shaft here and i'm going to use the plane for that and my knife so now i'm just making sure that it's absolutely there's no dust stuck in the surface of the wood here anymore now you have to be a little careful how hard you clamp this ferrule so it just barely sits there and i turn back to my spoke shave and i start trimming the shaft starting here at the edge trim it all the way down to the pencil mark to the mark and not over it so I do one side and I make it perfect and then I swap to the other side And I just keep it clamped and now I do the the edges here so I make one surface out of the sharp edge and I make it about this wide about three four millimeters and I do the next surface same way Now could be a time to start trimming the shaft if you feel this is too thick. This shaft measures the same as the ferrule, which is 30 times 40 millimeters. And that's good for a big hand like mine. But I think this paddle will be used by a tinier person than me. So I think I'm gonna trim it even further. But you don't just start trimming, you should kind of have a plan. So I just finish the, the shaft first to make it perfect, like perfectly even. And then I have a good chance of success when I trim that further down to make that precise also. All the way to the line. start doing it just now it's nice and round 
and what remains <coughs> is the shoulder. Now this is this is the kind of shoulder I like. It's it's uh, it's kind of a visible sharp shoulder, but it's not uncomfortable at all because what I do when I paddle, I hold my hand around it like this. It gives me a really good control of the of the blade. And it, it doesn't hurt my fingers or anything because it's fairly soft. But of course you are welcome to do your shoulder just the way you want it. This is your project, but I'm going to show you how I make this. I sort of continue the line from earlier. And then I take my knife. And I, you see there's a little ridge here and I kind of trim that reach down and make shortcuts and stop kind of at the bottom of this little groove that I'm making and then I start cutting opposite against my first cut and now there's a new ridge here and I trim it down the same way cut and I cut that way and then I cut even closer to the line here there's kind of a smooth transition from the flat sharp diamond shape to the round shape of the shaft. No interference here. And it tells me where my hand is. Um, so, and if you think this looks a little scary, then you just, just like with the planing, you just go slowly. Just work real slow, take a little at the time. Make sure that it's even. Now is actually the time to check if it's symmetric. It's not quite symmetric. I think it needs to be trimmed down a little on this side. So I just trim it down with a knife. And just what I just did, like this. Check symmetry. Mm, it looks better now. And you can even round off the the edge of the shoulder a little bit with the knife if you want to. Or you could just do it with sandpaper. That's also an option. Like this. That's good. I'm back on sandpaper again. Just started sanding the shaft and I'm careful to just kind of curl the sandpaper slightly so that I get even sanding. With the shoulder here I just try to tend to go go along the grain. And just touching, touching over the shoulder lightly from both sides. And of course, again, I do first I do 60, then I do 80, and at the end I do 150. Now I'm almost done with the with the 80 grit, and I've kind of kept a little distance to the ferrule here. I need to sand across the grain here, so I prefer to make a little sanding block again, like this. And I go very lightly. I start with 80 because I don't want to make too deep sandpaper cuts. So, and I try to go as far as I can, not straight across the grain, but more like sideways like a 45 degree angle or something I just get as close to the fool as I can now I just try to smoothen it out with the finest 150 and I go along the grain again This is the final sanding. Now after a couple of hours of fun and planing and uh, shaving and sanding, you're ready to go. Your paddle is uh, ready for finishing. Um, and I'm gonna just show you in the next video how you do little repairs. I have these nuts I told you about. I'm gonna just fix them and I'll show you how to reinforce the tip. I'm going to show you how you could do it in a very simple way. So stay tuned and soon we'll be out paddling.